uh, what we're going to do is uh, we want to give you uh, an idea about two things. One is, everybody's like, well, what's this regional police concept all about? And um, so there's a lot of questions going to be raised. And with all the questions, uh, what I think I'm going to do is answer a lot of those questions in my first presentation. Uh, my presentation is going to be, why regional police? What's the idea? What's the thinking behind it? What's the benefit? And why would you do it now? So that's basically what I'm going to go through. Uh, Joe, Joe Kirschner, is retired chief of uh, Philadelphia Township, along with, uh, I don't know, Joe, you have a, a quite a bit of uh, reference there. I think I'll be Joe is great. No. Now, Joe uh, has a lot of experience in this field. He uh, is working with the state right now as our consultant. Uh, he helped us do our regional police study. And what we, what we did was we, we, we thought, uh, let's have a meeting with all the surrounding municipalities and see what the interest is in possibly doing a study. Yes? I'm sorry, here, could you talk? Tell us a little bit of you You can't hear? I don't, no, I don't think you can hear me. Introduce yourself. Oh, I'm Bill McGovern. Sorry about that. Um, a little bit about me, I was a Township Supervisor Laura Frederick, 13 years. Uh, presently I'm on the uh, ambulance, uh, the local ambulance committee. Uh, and I'm also on the Zoning Hearing Board. But um, I, I started doing this regional police study about a year and a half ago. Uh, being a, a supervisor for 13 years with Laura Frederick Police Department, uh, being involved directly with them, I pretty much understand how the police department works and what they try to accomplish and what a lot of the problems are for them in, in giving good policing. Um, so this is why we said, well, let's, let's take a look at a couple things. There's economic reasons that are presenting themselves right now uh, in, in a couple of different ways. And also there's the public safety uh, aspect of it and good policing. You know, and you can see there's, there's a lot of difference between some policing and 24-hour services with policing around the clock. So what I'm going to do is uh, show you what we did. We gave a presentation back in March to the supervisors and the council people, and um, what we talked about was maybe doing a regional police study. And one thing I want everybody to understand right now is that there is no commitment at this point. It's merely a study to see what it would cost, if it made sense to do it, what would the advantages be? So now we're at that point where we had the study done, and that's what Joe's going to present to you tonight. I'm going to present to you how we kind of got to this point. So hopefully I can answer some questions while I'm actually doing the slides. And then at the end of my slide, I'll see if there's some questions I can answer. Then I'll take a few, and then I'll hand it over to Joe, and when Joe's done, we can take some more questions, you know, for people to better understand the whole concept. Because there is a lot to it. First question. Okay, topics for discussion. Is that? Okay. How's that? Topics for discussion. Yeah, because yeah, I tried to look out of the side here in one more. Anyway, why forming a regional police department makes good economic sense? Well, there's, there's a lot of reasons. If you took, um, and every municipality had a police department, what would that cost? Well, we have a part-time police department, and it's just over $600,000 a year for a part-time police department. You know, so it's hard to do nights and weekends and things like that. So there's a lot of times we don't have coverage. Now, people might say, well, when you don't have coverage, you have state police. Well, that's true to a certain extent, and I'll explain why. First off, if you call state police, you're going to get a professional. I mean, I mean, you, you can rely on them when they come to your house. You can really rely on what you're going to get. You're going to get excellent service. The problem is, they're, they're kind of spread thin. So if there's something really urgent going on over here, they might not be able to come out to you. Also, they don't enforce local ordinances either. So that's a little problematic for us. So with our own police department, we could do that. I'll give you a for instance. My neighbor called, this is like 10 years ago, maybe 12. 
She called the state police because there was somebody knocking but trying to get in the house. So she called the state police. They said, we'll get somebody there as soon as we can. Then there was an all-out battle fight that we used to call something and right at the Park Avenue. Now it's the Park Avenue Pizza. And it was all over the parking lot in the streets, so and the state cop had to stop there. Meanwhile, nothing, nothing, these people were still on the driveway, and uh, she said she called the police, she screamed at it out, and eventually they left. But an hour later, they called and said, are you still having a problem? Well, I mean, whatever's going to happen at that point is pretty much over, so fortunately they just left. But that's the, that's the situation. So when people say, well, we have state police, well, yes, we do. They're short-handed, they do what they can, and uh, it's, it's just hard for them to cover all, all the things. And again, they don't cover local ordinances. So there's a couple of things as we go through the slides that I'm going to explain in addition to what I just mentioned here. Why is now that that may take this time to move forward with this concept? Now I'm going to answer all these questions in the next slides. The next question is, what would a regional police force look like, and how would it function? Who would run and control the regional police department? Who would be in charge of making all the decisions? What do we need to do next to study and further consider the concept? Again, this is something that we had at a public meeting back in, in March, which was an advertised public meeting, the same as this one. So let's start looking at some of these questions. Why forming a regional police department makes good sense. It would provide full 24-7 police department for the region. The public and business owners are asking for this type of coverage. Um, people do come to our township meeting and say, well, why aren't we going to have full-time police? And we say, because it's not practical for someone our size, uh, for cost. So that's one reason. Um, we also had, uh, back in 2007, you can see how much people wanted to have this, is we have uh, a survey that went around to the uh, business owners, and they all uh, filled out a survey form, which I'll show you, that they came up with on their own, we didn't give them this form, and said they'd like to have full-time coverage. Cost share for municipalities for additional policing equipment. When you cost share, you're going to see uh, from some of the examples I show you, I had to take the, the little bit ahead, is that um, when you have cost sharing, it would mean that we might have to come up with a little more money, but we would have to get 24 to 7 covers because everybody else would be in the pot together. So it kind of helps us to be able to afford the regional police. Better control of crime in the region with more coverage and information sharing to enhance police efforts. You have to imagine, here we are in Lower Frederick Township, and then Upper Frederick, no police, Upper Southford, no police, Schweinsville, no police. So there's, it's just this one little pocket that we're trying to control. Now, if we have a full round of clock police department in all these townships, then of course we can control the crime much better and have better control of it instead of just from time to time. And you know, the criminals know who doesn't have police. I mean, why not go there? But uh, there's, there's a lot that people don't know about, but we do have crime in the area. And if you haven't been affected by it, you might not think this is important, but uh, we'll show you some reasons why it's important. Better training for officers and advancement. Well, that's important because you want to attract the best people, right? We yeah. want to have the best officers, you know, the most, the most professional. And if you don't have enough to offer them advancement, you know, better pay, things of that nature, well, then you, you sometimes, fortunately for right now, we're very lucky we have the, the police that we have because they're very good. But in order to continue to attract more, you, you need to have, have better incentives. Promote overall health, safety, and welfare. That's something that the Board of Supervisors, when you look at the second class township code, that's their job. It says it right in there, the public health, safety, and welfare. So that's something that the supervisors and, and the boroughs and the council people consider to be their job. And police presence is a proactive thing. If you have police presence in the area and people know you have police presence, I'll give you an example of that. 
one day one of our police officers stopped somebody. I forget what the situation was. And what do you think the guy said? Hey, we didn't see your car there. We thought you guys weren't on. <laughs> so these people actually know what's going on. You know, they know that you know, we're in a part-time police department. How crazy is that? And how crazy is the guy to say that, right? He wasn't too bright to begin with, so he's getting himself in trouble. And the, th the big thing is being proactive. You know, once, once an area has a pocket of crime, well, you can't get rid of it. All you can do at that point is manage it. Because if it starts to, if you see a problem coming in, and you see maybe uh, uh, these people selling drugs and more and more people are coming around, well, the police disperse that, and they know that the police are there, so they tend to, to come this, this way less than somewhere where there's no police. And the other reason is, if, if you do about the crimes we do have, it, it may concern you. This is just the, one of the, uh, our police chief put this together for us, all the different incidences that we have just in Lower Frederick Township. And the incidences are not just in Lower Frederick Township, they're everywhere. You know, we have a lot of the same things happening in Philadelphia, but just a lot less of it. This just shows month by month activity that the police department has. So they do keep busy with a lot of things. You know, we have theft, people breaking into cars. You know, we have, uh, I'll give you for instance, uh, our officers, and this, is, this has been about 10 years ago too, were driving around the township and saw a suspicious car in St. Mary's parking lot. So we just went back there and saw four people in it. So he talked to him a little bit, was suspicious, was able to search the vehicle and search the person. Then 18 bags of heroin. Just to stop, he just stopped in there and see what's going on. And you know, I don't know that they were selling it to the, to the school or to the kids at that point there. I, I think the idea was he just stopped in there to talk and see where they were going to go next and what they were going to do next. And what they did next was went to jail. So, and if we didn't have a police department, that would have just gone on right by everybody. And the situation just keeps getting worse and worse. This was the cert that actually was a petition that the uh, the people signed. Well, these are all the business owners and how long they've been in business. This was 2007, and from time to time they ask about it. Um, you might be surprised at what businesses in our area have been robbed a number of times. Usually it's in the evening, but I don't want to mention their names and stuff because. There's no need getting into that. But a couple of them more than once. And they, they actually did a lot of damage. So the next question, why is now an advantageous time to do it? Well, we presently have very talented and professional police officers. And the idea there is, hey, you know, if we can get some more people in, get some younger people in, and they can train them, you know, then they would learn all the good things. You know, uh, we have a, a retired state police officer, and we have another one with the two more with many years experience and all kinds of different training, and they can share that with, with the new people that come in. And we also, um, we have a highly educated police chief. He uh, has a lot of degrees. He's been down in Quantico. He's had the training down there, the FBI training. So, He's had a lot of different training. He was actually uh, training himself at Alvernia. He was training new, new uh, police officers. So he's very talented and he's, he's very much for the regional police effort because he finds that there's only so much he can do every day on his own. Not on his own, but with the other officers, with the limited staff that we have. I mean, we do get a lot of calls. Uh, some of them are serious and some of them not so serious, but they, they keep busy, so it's kind of hard to really go after the things that you need to go after. Like, we don't have a detective. If we had a detective, he could spend his time following up on some of these cases and, and maybe solving things a little bit better. So here's, here's the economic part of it a little bit. For the last several years, the state has been trying to come up with different ways, different House and Senate bills, to charge us for the state police. So you say, well, we already pay our taxes. Well, 
they're trying to pass a bill, we're just going to pay more taxes. And the, and the idea there is that it'll help pay for the existing police they have now, but it'll be no additional police. And, and also, again, they won't enforce your local ordinances. You'll just pay more for exactly what you have now. And I'll show you the difference, differences in the scenarios. So eventually one of these house bills, and even the governor now, is getting into the act. He's trying to pay us $25 a person uh, for state police coverage. Um, and, and the bills are all different depending on how many people you have, how much they want to charge. But I'll show you the least and the most how that works. Here's the lawmakers considered by state police funding measures. Here's the different ones, and these have been over the years. Uh, the, the heavier duty one is the Bill 1500, where they're looking at $156 per person. If we actually have to pay that, it's going to cost us more for the state police coverage that we already have than it would have been regionalized. And we'll show you the bill. You'll find that difference. Watch these numbers and when Joe shows his numbers. Here's what Governor Wolf proposed uh, charging municipalities for state police uh, coverage. And this is kind of what it looks like. This is the breakdown. This is where the economics come into the whole, the whole picture that makes sense. If you look at the governor's plan, and you, you, they go by uh, people in a township, look what Perky Oven has to pay for $25 a person. $227,500 for absolutely nothing additional. If the House Bill 1500 were to pass, it's $156 per person. That's $1,419,600, which is more than the Perky Oven goes into the regional police department and has round-the-clock police coverage. And so, you know, from, and from an economic standpoint, and from a coverage standpoint, and quality of coverage, it, it's, it makes pretty good sense. Now, Lower Frederick, we get off at only 78 because we have a part-time police department. So if you have a part-time police department, you got to pay half. Now, none of these bills have passed so far. I can't guarantee you they'll ever pass, but they're certainly trying to, and eventually they will. So if we wait until one of these bills get passed, then we're going to be scattering all around here proactively saying, wait a minute, we've been paying all this money for the same thing we're getting now when we can have a regional 24-7 department for a little less money. So it doesn't make, make good sense to wait and then be reactive when they do pay us something like that. Okay, what areas will be included in the region? We did also offer um, to uh, Upper Salford. Uh, they didn't do the study at this time, and it may be something they might be interested in the future. But we have uh, Lower Frederick, Upper Frederick, Perk Yeoman, and Swanksville did the study together. And you'll see what, the, uh, what, what uh, Joe has as far as what the study produced. This is just, uh, I had a five-year-old draw this for me, by the way. It wasn't me. But um, this just kind of shows you a little bit to give you an idea, I'm trying to put all things together, it's kind of good to have a, a visual of things. As you can see, Lower Frederick Township Police are right here. So basically, they're in the middle of the whole shooting match. So that kind of makes it uh, advantageous for us to actually have the, the regional police department right in the same location. Now, what we need to do is. Uh, we have a thousand square feet that we need to have to improve, if we can improve down there, and that'll be large enough to handle this for the next three, five years, whatever it takes. And then obviously if the department grows, we'd have to do something else. But when you look here, you got Perky Oven, Upper Frederick, Lower Frederick, Schwanksville, and here's the police department. So Joe's going to talk a little bit more about the zone. We, we just had this here for talking about zones and coverage and things which Joe will make more sense of for you. Okay, what would a regional force look like? So we'll try to give you some better ideas. Patrol zones would be set up and the entire region would be patrolled day and night and respond to emergencies quickly. Once we have regional police, there'll always be somebody in the police in every zone, each zone, and then there'll also be 
depending on the time of day, there's different different times. There'll be uh, traffic control officers, we'll have a detective. In plain words, it'll just be a professional police department where we can give you the best coverage and the best safety. We, of course, would use GPS to monitor the police. A lot of people say, well, when police are out at night, how do you know where they're at? How do you know they're in control? We know it, the county knows it, because we use GPS. Every two minutes, those vehicles are pink, 24 hours a day. So we know where they're at, we know how long they've been there, and we even, we even know how fast they've been going. So you have it in your evening shift, you'll, you'll have a sergeant but uh, with the other police officers. But even still, the police chief can come in in the morning, and he can know where everybody was, what they did, how long they were there. You know, so it's really a, a good thing. Now what we would have is an intergovernmental cooperation agreement with the other townships. That sounds pretty heavy duty, but we actually already have experience with that, and I'll show you that. You know, we have the Central Park and Valley Regional Planning Commission, which we put together, it's almost 10 years old. And then, uh, see, how old is that? I guess it's about 10 years. About 10 years, Bob, I guess, I don't know. It's, it's about that, time flies. But anyway, we also did the regional uh, ambulance effort. And we'd have a strong mission statement. And what we want to try to do is create a public friendly type police department. We want people to know the police. Uh, we want people to be at, the police to be at all our activities, things like that. Where it's kind of like, even though it's region, it's a small region, it's not, it's not that big of a region where the police get to know people and things like that, like we do now. It's kind of a, it's just kind of a good thing for the, for the uh, community. Who would run and control the police department? Well, we would form a police commission for representatives from each municipality. And that's important that each municipality will have a representative there so it can represent its people and make sure that everything is fairly done. And of course, they would create their bylaws and decide how that, that makeup would be. Now, here's the most important part, because sometimes, can you believe this, politics might come into this a little yeah. bit? You yeah, know, once in a while. But, but, but I think we can avoid those kind of things, because we know going up front, you know, what the rules of the game are going to be. No one municipality would have any more say than the other. The commission would oversee the day-to-day -day affairs of the region. The commission would not direct the officers on what to do, and the chief of police would manage the officers. You know, it wouldn't be 25 supervisors, all town one officer what to do. You know, it would be very organized. The police commission would set the standards and expectations by which the chief would manage the department, and the chief would get all his direction from the commission. Here's the thing, Lower Frederick Township Police Department, well, the question is, well, are they still going to be in charge? The answer is, no, they will not be. They will, they will not be anymore. So, Lower Frederick will give up all direct control and abolish the police department. In plain words, it will be abolished, it will be gone. So, that control will also go away with it. Uh, we, we may use the, it will use the headquarters uh, that it has now, 